Well, good morning and happy Easter. Welcome to Unity Church for Creative Living in St. John's, Florida. My name is Reverend Yvonne McAndrew, and it is my honor and privilege to serve you. <sighs> Thank you for joining me on Facebook Live for our Easter service on April 12, 2020. I love your Facebook comments, and I read them all, so please keep them coming. I love them. I want to remind you that God is good all the time. Thank you. Let's take that into prayer as we say thank you. Thank you, God. Thank you, God, for this now moment. Thank you for your living, loving presence as it moves in and through us. Thank you for our own awakening experience to the Christ within us that we may move through difficult situations and rise above them and come forth resurrected into a new way of being, into a new life. Dear Heavenly Father, I hold the whole world in prayer this morning, sending out love and light and healing energy from my heart to those that are suffering, to those who are mourning, to those who need healing, and to those who are giving all that they have to give to help and support those in need. Thank you, God, for your living, loving presence. And as that living, loving presence of God moves through in, in and through each and every one of us, we too can ask, how can I serve? How can I give? What can I do to make a difference? So centered in this place of divine love and divine light, we say thank you, God, for the inner wisdom that comes through, for the light that lights up our life that comes from within, from the Christ within. And we say thank you, sweet, sweet spirit, for this Easter Sunday and the opportunity to come together virtually and share the Sunday service together. And so it is. Amen and amen. Today's daily word is Easter. I recognize the risen Christ in family, friends, and my spiritual community. Early in the evening, on the day of resurrection, Jesus, unrecognized, joins two of his followers as they journey from Jerusalem toward the nearby village of Emmaus. Accepting an invitation to stay and share a meal, Jesus takes bread, blesses, and breaks it, and gives it to his hosts. In that moment, their eyes are opened. They recognize Jesus, and alive in their hearts, he vanishes before their eyes. Later, the two explain to others how the risen Christ became a living presence to them in the fellowship of breaking bread. Easter celebrates the risen Christ, an immortal presence freed from all limitation, awaiting discovery in every person and life event. I recognize the risen Christ in shared experiences with family, friends, and my spiritual community. And from Luke 24, 31, Then their eyes were opened, and they recognized him. And then he vanished from their sight. I recognize the Christ in family, friends, and my spiritual community. I recognize the Christ in family, friends, and my spiritual community. Ah, 
I miss you and I can't wait until we're back together again. A little story to tell you. A man was driving along the highway when he saw the Easter Bunny hopping across the road. He swerved to avoid hitting him, but unfortunately, he hit. The basket of eggs and candy were flying all over the place, and the driver pulled over to see if the Easter Bunny was okay. Sadly, the, bu the bunny was dead. He felt so bad, he began to cry. A woman driving by had also pulled over, and she went over to the man and asked what was wrong, and he said, I just feel terrible. I accidentally hit the Easter Bunny, and I killed him. What should I do? And the woman told the man, it's okay, don't worry. I know exactly what to do. And so she went to her car, and she pulled out a spray can, and she walked over to the dead bunny, and she sprayed the contents of the can all over that furry animal. And miraculously, the bunny came to life. He resurrected. He jumped up, picked up the spilled eggs and candy, put them back in his basket, and then he waved his paw, and then he hopped down the road. And about 50 meters away, the Easter bunny stopped, and he paused, and he waved, and then he hopped again, another 50 meters or so down the road, and then he stopped, and he waved, and then it happened again and again and again, and the man, the man was astonished. He, he couldn't figure out what happened. He asked the woman, what is in that spray can you used on the Easter bunny? And the woman, she turned the can around so that the man could read the label, and it said, Hairspray restores life to dead hair and adds permanent wave. <laughs> That's my corny Easter joke for today. I hope you enjoyed it. God is good all the time. Happy Resurrection Day. Today is the day that we celebrate Jesus. Jesus' resurrection. Jesus had quite the week, didn't he? He went from arriving in Jerusalem at the beginning of the week with a king's welcome to teaching and preaching loud to large crowds of people to falsely being accused, tried, and crucified and then laid to rest in a borrowed tomb. But on the third day, he rose, just like he said he would. Too often people stop at the crucifixion experience and miss out on the resurrection. You know, life as we know it has dramatically changed. And what can we learn from this challenging and changing time? It's a good time for inner reflection. Jesus was crucified and placed in a borrowed tomb for three days, and then he arose again. In, in our life, in periods of entombment, or quarantine, or isolation, these are great times for deeper inner reflection, prayer, and connection. As we practice our spiritual principles, we learn that there is more to the story. Even though we have no idea what that is, this is where our faith and our trust come in. I invite you to think about this. If there is no resurrection, well, no, if there is no crucifixion, there's no resurrection, right? If there's no crucifixion, there's no resurrection. Daniel Namad, a New Thought uh, musician, we actually had him here about six weeks ago doing a concert for us. He has a song titled, No Mud, No Lotus. No Mud, No Lotus. The roots of the lotus flower go deep, deep into the mud below it while the flower rests gently on the surface without becoming wet or muddy. It is just beautiful. The gritty, tenacious mud just below the surface 
forces us to go deep. We can use these muddy times as an opportunity to dive deeper into ourself and discover our strength and depth of compassion as we evolve into the Christ consciousness. In order to move through the darkness of the tomb into the light and new life, something has to give. Something has to be removed. Something has to be broken through. It is a process of releasing the old way and embracing the new life that is desiring expression. Look at nature. Seeds regularly release shedding the shell and bursting forth from darkness. The cracked pot that waters flowers on the path or the chick breaking through its shell into new life. The caterpillar who enters the transformation of the chrysalis and emerges a new being taking flight. The tenacity of a tiny flower seed that pushes up through the cement to claim life. Life will not be denied. It is inherent in nature and in us to rise to new life. But sometimes we forget that. I have a quick story for you about acornology. Yep, I said acornology. I just learned about it. Once upon a time, in a not so far away land, there was a kingdom of acorns. A myriad of acorns nestled at the foot of a grand old oak tree. Since the citizens of this kingdom were modern and fully westernized acorns, they went about their business with purposeful energy. They engaged in self-help courses and seminars called getting all you can out of your shell. There were recovery groups for acorns who had been bruised in their original fall. There were retreats and spas for oiling and polishing those shells and various acornopathic therapies to enhance longevity and well-being. One day, in the midst of this kingdom, there suddenly appeared out of nowhere a naughty little strange acorn who apparently was dropped out of the clear blue sky by a passing bird. He was odd-looking. He was capless, dirty, and making an immediate negative impression on his fellow acorns. Naughty crouched behind the oak tree and he stammered out a strange and wild tale, pointing upwards at the tree. He spoke to all who would listen, and he said, We are that. Delusional thinking, obviously, the other acorns concluded. But one or two of them continued to engage him in conversation. So tell us, how would we become the tree? Well, he said, pointing downward, it has something to do with going deep into the ground alone, and isolation, so to speak, and then allowing that which desires to emerge to crack open our shell. Oh, that's, that's insane, they responded. That's crazy. Why, then we wouldn't be acorns anymore. They didn't understand. Cute story that relates to our own transformation. In order to transform, we are all called deeper within, and then we must rise. 
there's an old hymn. Rise and shine and give God the glory, glory. Rise and shine and give God the glory, glory. What are we rising up to? Hmm? What are we rising up to? We're rising up to a new story, a new understanding. But it's not just a new understanding. It's a new way of being, shining our Christ light, truly embodying our Christhood. This is how we rise and shine and give God the glory, glory. Easter is about coming into a knowing that endings are not final. They are part of an endless cycle of life and death, hope and despair, beginnings and endings. We are being given an opportunity for a new beginning. Just when the caterpillar thought his life was over, he became a butterfly. No crucifixion, no resurrection, no mud, no lotus, no chrysalis, no butterfly. God is good all the time. Resurrection, as Charles Fillmore, co-founder of Unity, puts it, the restoring of mind, resurrection is the restoring of mind and body to their undying state. Realizing that God is spirit and that God created us with the power like that which he himself possesses. The power of the resurrection is embodying the Christ within. Easter is a time for us to remember who we are as beloveds of the divine and to claim our Christhood. What is it going to take to wake up our inner acorn, our Christ self, and acknowledge, embrace, and unleash its potential? You are a child of God. Your playing small doesn't serve the world. You were born to make manifest the glory of God that is within you. And it's not just in some, it is in everyone. This unprecedented time that we are in today with the coronavirus pandemic turning everything, everything we know upside down, this time doesn't have to feel like a punishment unless we make it one. Maybe, just maybe, it's a gift. It's a gift to help us remember who we are. Slowing down, shutting down the busy machine of life, the noise, the hustle, the busyness of daily living so we can go within and connect with that part of us that is desiring to emerge. I want us to come out of this pandemic stronger, wiser, clearer about what's most important. And most of all, I want us to come out of this transformed. Let's not go through the difficult part, the crucifixion, and not experience the reward, the resurrection into a new being. Expressing more fully who we are as beloveds of the divine. Before I bless the offering and move into meditation, I want to just briefly recap. Take the time to go within. Connect and reflect. Release that which does not serve your highest good. Prepare to rise and shine and give God the glory, glory. Use all your spiritual tools and practices and experience the resurrection of your own being. And enjoy the transformation. God is good all the time. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Well, happy Resurrection Day. Thank you for your love, your prayers, and your financial care of Unity Church for Creative Living. We appreciate you. We love you. We bless you. We miss you. 
Let's bless our offering. I'll say it once and then I'll invite you to repeat it with me. Divine love flowing through me blesses and multiplies all that I have, all that I give, and all that I receive. And I am richly blessed. Thank you, God. Together, divine love flowing through me blesses and multiplies all that I have, all that I give, all that I receive. And I am richly blessed. Thank you, God. And so it is. So I want to take this time as we prepare for meditation and just invite you to relax, close your eyes if you'd like, center on your breathing. Breathe in, God is. Breathe out, I am. God is. I am. I invite you to let go of anything you may be holding in your heart and mind and give this time to God. And I invite you to allow my words to be the words of your own heart and mind as we share this brief time of prayer and meditation together. Thank you, God. Thank you, God, for this day, this beautiful Easter Sunday. Thank you for the opportunity to be alive in it. And thank you for this opportunity to remember the truth of who I am. The truth of who I am. And to go within and connect with that Christ essence that is within me, desiring to break free and express fully. Thank you, God, for the times of self-reflection, for the gifts of prayer and meditation, for the realization that sometimes I still have things I need to let go of. And I release and I let go and I set them free and I bless them. And as I do, I feel my energy rise. And I feel my light shining a little brighter. And I recognize that Christ essence within me, within my family, within my friends, within my spiritual community and my community at large. When I come from that place of the Christ light, and it's shining forth from me, then that is all I see reflected back to me is others' Christ lights as well. So on this Easter Sunday, no matter what crucifixion experiences and challenges we have been through, we know that this too shall pass. We connect deeper into the divine presence within and we prepare for the transformation, the resurrection, the new life that is being brought forth in and through us. I invite you to just take a moment and go deeper within as we connect with that still small voice of God within us in that sacred place and let us just be still be still and know and listen to that voice of God as it speaks just to you in the silence 
in the silence. And I say thank you, sweet, sweet spirit. Thank you, God, for this transformation, this resurrection experience that is happening in and through me and bringing forth a new being, a new life, a transformation of a new me that is being birthed into expression. And on this Easter Sunday, we give thanks to Jesus Christ who demonstrated for us that there is no death, only life. And we say thank you, sweet, sweet spirit. And so it is. Amen. And amen. Well, continue to hold the vision with me that we are able to come to our come together in person soon in our spiritual community and gather and share and love and hug and marvel at our transformation. So this is Reverend Yvonne McAndrew at Unity Church for Creative Living in St. John's, Florida, reminding you that today is still a great day for a great day. Namaste. And I also want to remind you that for those of you who received our email blast, you have an invitation in your inbox to join us today at 1130 Eastern Time on Zoom for a uh, Easter virtual fellowship hour. So I look forward to seeing you, hearing from you, and connecting with you on the Zoom platform. Love you. Hope to see you soon. Namaste.